Yes, we have the Jerusalem. And it does that for the reason that we're to be a mother. A mother symbolizes one who loves, one who can bind up, one who can heal, yes. one who can care, doesn't she? Yes. There's nothing more beautiful. I was watching and my friends, this lovely couple with me tonight, and I was looking at your little infant child, so tender, so tiny, and it's all right. Don't worry about it crying. Or is it a boy? It's a boy, isn't it? Um, don't worry about that little fellow crying, because no. the church is the best place he can cry. <laughs> and the, the church is the best That's place. Right. Yeah. And we, have, right. you know, we, we, we love the cry of the child. And um, I was looking at the tiny. How old is he? One month. One month. One month. So tiny. So just an interest in the life, 30 days. And I thought about, I looked at the mother here go out and the father. How they nurse that child. They tenderly watch after that child. They love that child, don't they? Yes. There's no love greater than the love of a mother and a father following that. Uh, the love of the mother first, the most tenderness is in the mother. Father, same, with a different manner of display. But both, but the mother symbolizes life. The mother symbolizes tenderness. And that's the way the church should be. 55 years ago when I came here, I'm starting my 56th year. That's, some of you were not born when I came. Some of you were not born when I became pastor of this church. And um, when I came here, and my wife with me, and we both determined we would love God's people. We would love God's people. As God loved us, we would love God's people. We would love the family of God. And we tried to do that. We tried to do that. I've never turned a stranger away as a pastor of this church. I don't remember ever being unkind to any one that came through those doors. I don't remember ever refusing to pray with anyone. Sometimes in the early morning hours here, when no one was here, alone in this church at 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock, praying with people who had needs, that God said for us to love his people. And you, you can't fake that. No, sir. You cannot fake love. You can fake courtesy, but you can't fake love. That's right. Love is there or it's not there. Right. You may display an outer shell, but love has to be there. And it was mentioned in I Calvary. I'm going to dwell there a few minutes. I'm going to hold your attention <clears throat> for a few minutes. I'm not, I don't have a lengthy message. I have this. Yes, sir. Because I want to touch. If you're here, I want you to know that you are in a mother church. Yes. A church that has love for you. Yes. That has compassion. Right. You may be a teenager, but we, we love teenagers. You may be approaching adult years in 20, 21. We love you. Yes. Uh, you can have the hoary head of years such as I have upon me, and you can be loved. We love you because God first loved us. How did God first love us? Through his son. His son made the difference. His son makes the difference. His son is making the difference tonight. When you come to a church, you come for fellowship, yes. You come to meet others who like you and you like them, you love them, and you get acquainted with them. They become friends, they become part of your people that you enjoy seeing through the week at the supermarket in the neighborhood, in the community, hello there. And we call ourselves brothers and sisters in the church, don't we? Because we're a family, why do we do that? We don't have the same genealogy. We don't have the same nativity of any of us. Why do we call each other brothers and sisters? Because we are a family in Christ of God. We are the family of God. 
And the reason we are is not because we chose to be. No more than the child chose to be in the family it's in. I did not choose to be in the family of God, but he chose me. He chose you. And the reason he chose you is because he loves you. Someone said, tell me why, why, why did God choose me? Well, there's one answer I can give you, and I know I'm right. He loved you. He loved you. Now, he may have purposes for you other than that, but he loves you. No doubt he does, but he loves you. The family of God, there's no place like it. There shouldn't be. There isn't. It's not a sect you get in. It's not a church you join. It's not um, a membership club. It's not based on how you dress, how you... Uh, the cost of your dress, the cost of your car you drive, the cost of the house you live in. You come to one focal point when God brings you to the church. When God adds you to the church, to the body of Christ, you come to one focal point, and that's Calvary. There was a place called Calvary. I want to read it. An excerpt from the scripture for a moment. Would you bear with me? In Luke, uh, the 23rd chapter, uh, verse 32. And there were also two other malefactors. I'm in the 23rd chapter of Luke, the gospel of Luke. Led with him to be put to death. So there were three, were there not? And when they came to the place, or when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary. And a, a Calvary simply means, in the Hebrew language, the Latin, the place of the skull. Yes. That's what the word Calvary means. The place of the skull. And the reason that Calvary has that name is because all that was left of the Son of Man was the skull, the body. That was all that was left. The Son of God was not there. He left. He said, it is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And all that was there on that cross was a body, a skull, a place, the place of the skull. Where did he go? He went into the hands. He said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. You can find no safer place to put your life than the hands of God. If you're a young woman here tonight, if you're a young man, if you're a couple, if you're a family, you can find no safer place to put your life than the hands of God. I place mine there. They're going to stay there. They're not going to leave. I promise you that everything about me, and I instructed Sister Charlotte when I was praying with her tonight, I said, Charlotte, let the Lord open the new chapter. Let the Lord close the old chapter. You're no longer in Kentucky. You no longer live on that acreage. God has moved you. You didn't come to Florida to visit. And I said, let the Lord take all the hurt, the pain. And she's got a lot of it. And she's had a lot of it. Sorrow. And take even the bitterness. And love and forgive. That's it. Even forgive. Even love. Yes. Because there's the victory. And you're the winner. You're not the loser, Charlotte. You're the winner. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Praise our God. You're not the loser. You're the winner. Hey, shout that with me. I'm a winner. Brother Dale, you're a winner tonight. Amen. Cause of Calvary. For the buddy, you're a winner. Yes. 
You're not a loser. Don't anybody classify me as a loser. I'm the most exuberant, happy man you'll ever meet. I, I, I've got more to praise God for than all of you put together. I've got a, I've, I've got a reason to shout all over this church. From rags to riches, that's my story. What's yours? From rags to riches, God brought me, changed me, gave me a life that only people dream about. They dream about a life like I live. But God gave me that life. Oh, yes, brother. Out of the bitterness of society, yes. out of the dregs of society, God gave me a life Woo. that I can praise Him for. Come on, yes. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God gave me a life that I can praise him for. Praise the name of the Lord. God gave you that tiny life you have. God gave you that marriage you have. God gave you that love you have. God gave you the family you have. Praise the name of the Lord. When you come to the church, that's why that we can sing, have fellowship, yeah. Rejoice, preach, shout, be exuberant. Yes. And when we leave here, it's like a uh, we've had a, a a gentle breeze blow into our nostrils, and we feel refreshed. We feel completely new. When I came tonight, I felt a little tired from the week and the weekend coming up, but I'm not now. Because I'm breathing the aroma and the atmosphere and the air of a child of God. Yes, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. I have something to praise Him for. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. You haven't thrown in the towel, have you? No. Not hardly. You haven't declared that you're a loser, have you? No, sir, brother. You haven't declared it's over, have you? No, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. How many still have some mountains you're going to climb? Many have some valleys you're going to get through. Yes. Praise our God. Yes. How many believe the greatest victories are yet to come? Yes. And the greatest treasures yes. yet to be put in our life. Praise God. Praise God. Gotta think that way. You know how losers think? It's over with. I can't get out of it. I'm stuck. Yeah. Absolutely. Everything's gone. Yeah. It's over. It's done. It's sad. Yeah. Well, it's true. It's pitiful. I'm sad. I'm forlorn. I'm lost. That winter's thing, I'm just beginning to fight. Just just, I've got the greatest victories up ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I see the blue in the sky. I see the rainbow up there. I'm looking up. God is good to me. God is going to help me. God is going to encourage me. And my problems that I have today, I will see them no, no more. more. Right. They will be conquered, done away with, yes. put aside. Yes. You know what Moses said to Israel yes. when they crossed the Red Sea? Yes, and the Egyptians were coming back to them. They looked bad. Oh, did it look bad? Thunder and heard 600 chariots, yes. armed men. They were coming after them, and the, the sea was on before them, and the mountains were over them, and, and they knew they couldn't climb the mountains in time to get away from the Egyptians. You know what Moses said? Stand still. Be sober. Don't be quivering cowards. Come on, brother. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Because the Egyptians which you see today, you'll see them no more forever. I felt like when I finished praying with Sister Charlotte and the victory of Jesus Christ came in this tabernacle and the unity of prayer and one mind and one accord, the name of Jesus, the power in that name, the power in that name, the power in that name. Praise God. I felt like telling her, and I did do it. I didn't feel like I did it. I said, Charlotte, it's over with, said and done. Yes. Raise your head up. Yes. 
There's a new day beginning. There's a new chapter. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody give him praise. Moments more. A few moments more. Praise God. And I'll, I'll let you go for this. Verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers with them derided him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God, and the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, yes. and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a subscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Verse 39, And one of the malefactors which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. Verse 42, and he said unto Jesus, one of them did, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, today. shalt thou be with me in paradise. There are several things about this chapter and about the reading I just gave you. It looked like that Jesus was lost the battle was lost. The cause was lost. It looked like all that he came to do was coming to a crushing end at a place called Calvary. It looked like that the place was going to be desolate of any victory. And there would be no victories there that day at Calvary with two malefactors and one of them raving on him and saying, if you be the Son of God, uh, save us. The soldiers saying, save us, save yourself. save yourself, and if you be the Christ, save yourself. If you saved others, but you can't do that, can you? You saved others, but you can't save yourself. Let me shout the news tonight to the church. Yeah, he didn't need to save himself. No, he didn't. No. He had a heavenly father. No. Yeah. 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 Brother. I said he had a heavenly yeah. father. Yeah. That reached down in the grave after three days and said, brother, brother. Come up, Jesus. Yeah. Come up. Out of the grave. Out of the grave. He stayed there three days. He didn't need to save himself. No. Because the Spirit of God <laughs> reached into the clay and into the ground and yes. into the dirt and brought Jesus out of that grave. Yes. Did you know tonight the enemy may look at you and say, If you're so great as a Christian and you think you're so good and you think you're doing so good and you think that all of this power they preach about and all of this goodness and all the grace of God and all the holiness of salvation and all the righteousness of God is, is going to save you? Oh, then go ahead and believe that. No, I don't believe that. I believe all my righteousness will never save me. I don't believe how good I can be will save me. I don't believe how much I can come to church will save me. I don't believe all the Bible reading I can do will save me. But there is one that will save me. His name is Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't believe because you look at me and say, I'm a Christian will save me. I don't believe because I sit on a platform will save me. I don't believe because I shine out as a person with good language or perhaps in between or, or however you judge me. I, I don't think my influence with you or yours with me. I don't think the padded pew you're sitting on, I don't think the uh, building we're in will save us. There's only one thing that can save you from dying as a sinner and facing the judgment of God. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that was filled 
on Calvary 2,000 years ago. Praise the name of the Lord. You, your goodness will not save you. Your beauty will not save you. Or if you're not so beautiful, will not save you. Uh, your house you live in will not save you. The car you drive will not save you. Because you weigh so much or you're so strong will not save you. Because of your bank account, it will not save you. But I know one thing that will save you. It's the blood of Jesus uh, that touches you and comes into your life and changes you. Praise the name of the Lord. I know one thing that can take a woman that's been through what Charlotte has been through and what many of you have been through and what I have been through and what we as humans go through. Yes. It isn't all that we do. It isn't all we are. It is one act of one man in one place at one time. His name was Jesus. He still is Jesus. He still is the Son of God. And the power that was at Calvary is still here tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. I said the power of Calvary is still here in the church. They drove carts, then we drive cars. They, 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 they were without power of electricity. They were without all the modern things we have. Society has changed. The world has changed. All of that's changed, but Jesus has not changed. He was the Son of God that went to the cross. He was the Son of God that died and went to the grave. He was the Son of God that arose. He is the Son of God that is here tonight as Lord and Master and Savior. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the reason I'm going to have myself a great time on Saturday night before I leave here. I'm going to praise him again. I'm going to praise him again. I'm going to go out of this place happy. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going out of here shouting. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. Oh, praise God. Let's pick up a verse of that. Amazing. 